Mike, I'll be comes now, see if we can get some more. And now the moment where they're about to lose radio contact on the far side of the moon. Right, so everybody keep cool. We got uh, Lynn still attached. The Lynn spacecraft's good. So if we need uh, to get back home, we got Lynn to do a good portion of it with. Okay, let's make sure that we don't do anything that's going to blow our CSM electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose the main or the uh, fuel cell number two. Okay, we want to keep the O2. And Despite I the gravity of the situation, the flat yeah, American yeah, voices yeah. retain that matter of fact tone that has characterized so much that has been extraordinary. So I'm not. Come in. Mission control. Thought you'd come. Just a moment. I, I don't want to miss this. There's something coming through. It's a response. It's a response from Ferguson. Commander Ferguson responding to controls. Last suggestion. We're down to 10 miles, Jeff. I've tried to link the auxiliary circuit to the computer, but there's still no response from the control. Understood, Six. We still show no fault here. Keep your finger on that switch. We're still searching. We read your Thought you'd drink. Thought we ought to be civilized about this. Well, those were the last words. They've lost radio contact. Achilles 6, the mission that was to inaugurate man's first permanent station on the moon, is locked into an orbit that, unless some miracle occurs, will produce the first American disaster in space. At this moment, there are no words describe the anxiety and depression. The response at last. <laughs> In a strange way, those brave men in that tiny craft have become a family to us all. About two hours, I'd say. He's still soft. We are now returning to the Space Center at Houston to hear the latest on Achilles 6. When it comes to violence, there really is a common market. Achilles 6. I wouldn't. Unaccountably Spoil your breakfast. Oh, Jesus. Talk about beating somebody's brains out. He was a writer. Hmm? Is that what you do with writers in England? Oh, please, would you? Ferguson, Cherniak, and Macero will not be returning to Earth. The president. That's the first one I've ever had. Best what? Writer. It's what you might call a turn up for the books. <laughs> Sorry, sir. What did you find? The man next door reported to the night porter. The porter found the body and called us. Well, let's speak to the man next door. Sergeant Duff, was that television set on when they found him? Yes, sir. It was on when I came in.
No. I saw the door standing open. It isn't wise these days. I called the porter. You didn't see the body, Mr. Pennington? Did you know Mr. Marlowe well? I didn't know him at all. We were just neighbors. Are you British? I am British. Any visitors? Girlfriends? None that I've seen. Boyfriends? No. I mean, he may have been strange, but not that way, I think. You would know if he had any visitors, wouldn't you? How do you mean? I mean, I can hear your television set distinctly. Which means you would be able to hear anything in here, like uh, laughter, argument, loud noise. Hmm? Not if my TV was on. Drowns the noise, you see? Yes, I see. How did you discover what happened then? I took my milk bottles out during one of the commercial breaks. His door was wide open. I called the porter. Did you miss any of the program? What about your wife? My wife is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Pennington. What do you drink, Mr. Pennington? Beg your pardon? Whiskey. Drop of whiskey. Why? No reason. Television will be the death of crime detection, Duff. How's that, Inspector? No one hears anything anymore. Could I speak to the porter now, please, Constable? Listen. There are more tears than smiles. There is more sea than earth. One day, the insupportable grief of mankind will sweep over the land, and an ark will float on that liquid expression of misery. What do you make of that? I'm not much on modern literature, sir. Well, he's turned his television off. We've made some progress in... Possible. I mean, he's. Shh. My God. Call an ambulance quickly and alert the hospital. How we fight against it. They're busy. Jumbo crash. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Sergeant Hughes. He'll be on in first shift. If he speaks one word, I want it. Yes, sir. The porter? He claims he came up when Pennington called and found the man dead. He ran back down and called us on his own phone. Any reason not to believe him? None I could see, but I'm having him checked. What about visitors? Said the same as Pennington. He didn't have any. He had one tonight. Zunfeld? Never heard of him. Pick me up in the morning at 9.30.
As soon as they let you in there. Television wasn't on when it happened. Huh? Apparently not. Anyway, the porter said he turned it on while he was waiting because, you know, the astronauts had gone behind the moon and there was still a chance. Yes, all right. But we can't put him to the guillotine for that. No. Were there any prints? No, not really. They were too smeared on the statue. Mm. And the only clear prints on the TV were the porters. Mm. Just when I thought I was going back in peace, it begins to have the smell of one of those cases. Oh, I don't know, Inspector. We found Zonfeld. It's only been 12 hours. It's not bad, you know. Look, here we are, number 44. Dr. Zonfeld, please. First floor, end of the corridor on the left. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. I am Inspector Br Oh, yes, Inspector Brunel. Yes, I told the doctor you called. Brunel. 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 Sorry. Doctor? Doctor, Inspector Brunel is here to see you. Terrible, isn't it? There aren't many Zonfelds in the directory. Hmm? No. You're French? Yes. I hope Mr. Mauler isn't in any trouble. <laughs> Dr. Zonfeld will see you now. Thank you. Oh. I, uh, I expected a man. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no way of knowing. And I expected an English inspector. Well, uh, in Paris right now, a Frenchman is confronting that English inspector with equal surprise. Ah, I see. Yes, we're trying to acquire each other's weaknesses. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm calling about uh, John Moller. Yes. My secretary explained. May I ask you, doctor, if your relationship with Mr. Moller is personal or professional? Oh, purely professional, Inspector. He's a patient. He was found in his flat last night. Dead? Not quite, but he had been badly assaulted. Oh. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. But, but I assume he'll be all right then? He will never be all right again. Oh. Oh, that's tragic. Uh, no one seems to know much uh, about him. Well. I know a good deal about him, but he had no enemies that I know of. No friends either. That's one of his problems. He must have had one enemy. Well, I don't see that that follows. A man may be attacked by a perfect stranger. There were two glasses laid out. One contained brandy and one whiskey. Well, how can I help you? Why did they come to you? I have a gift for disaster. You seem to have survived it. I don't mean for me. I mean for others. And have you come to me to confirm this gift or to assist you in repudiating it, Mr. Moller? 
He had delusions. Most patients come because they feel the world is too much for them. Mr. Mauler felt he was too much for the world. In his case, it began when a nanny he hated died of measles. He believed he caused it. She was an Irish bitch, priest-ridden, rosary-wracked, and in desperate need of the consolation of the damned. Get ye hence, that Lord will no more dwell among you. You will wander as orphans, but Lucifer did not triumph, for the Lord is mighty and terrible. And in his wrath, he poured his fury out like fire, tormenting the wanton, searing the flesh of those who dwelled in iniquity. He led the wicked into darkness. Night after night, she filled me with visions of the blood-red hell she longed for on Earth. Until one night, boiling with measles, I closed my eyes and prayed to the devil. Dear Lucifer, let her burn in hell fire as you're burning me. The ashes. The next day she took to her bed and died. He was a writer, you understand, so his descriptions tended to be a little lurid. It would hardly get him arrested. But uh, there were others? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, his delusions were reinforced. It was a dreary place with seedy hotels with names like Atlantis and Fairview and Welcome. John! And Mother was much like the hotels, a decade past her prime, a lot of paint covering the worst cracks, a pathetic pretense of being better than she was. John! Do make yourself useful for a change and fetch my parasol. Father sported a moustache, a blazer, and the title Major acquired from a reserve regiment when England's need was at its greatest. But he was no match for her. You scuff those shoes, you'll go to school in carpet slippers. Oh, my God, I don't know how we came to have such a dreamer. Stupid mouth half open. How would you like if he saw things? No, you're too hard on him. He's, um, well, he's naturally introspective. Don't try and nibble me with long words, Henry Mauler. He's a born fool. I know where he gets it from. And that's an hereditary fact. Away from there, you stupid little... Henry, can't you control him? Get your hands off that! Oh, let him enjoy himself. Are you taking his side against me? And am I supposed to do everything myself? Serve the lunch, pack it away again? Ever since I had that shot. John, get over here, help your mother! with the brakes? No. You didn't yell? You didn't try to warn them? When I saw them from that hotel window, I knew it was inevitable. Are you sure that isn't an excuse? 
a simplistic interpretation. And if it were the only incident, it might be valid. Oh, there were others? Several. All equally inevitable. I felt them to be. And he's carried that kind of conviction with him right through his life? Yes. Yes, I would say that's one way to describe it. Doctor? Doctor, Mrs. Harrison's here to see you. Um, I'm sorry, Inspector. I have a patient now. I if I can be of any further help. You can. I want to hear those other incidents. If he believed he was involved in disasters, he may have convinced someone else to, and they sought revenge. Oh, I hardly think so. Most people are very sane about delusions. It's only the deluded themselves who take their stories seriously. I could come at six, after you finished. Tonight? There's a murderer, or at least an attempted murderer, somewhere in London tonight. And I would like to find him. Well, I'm meeting someone for dinner. I... All right, Inspector. Six o'clock. Thank you. Um, does uh, West Front mean anything to you? He wrote it in his journal, next to your name. No. No, I don't know what that could mean. Thank you, Doctor. Excuse me. Please, try to get the corridor clear. Sorry. Anything? No, sir. He's, he's hardly alive. I met a Dr. Johnson. Is he around today? I think so, sir. They're all pretty busy. They're all a bit unhappy about the bed being tied up, since it doesn't seem as though... Oh, wait a minute. There he is. And will they have to have more plasma? Paul Leeds tried to get McManus down here. Give him the full list of casualties. Oh, Inspector Brunel, what a pain in the derriere you are being. Hey, White, separate the children's figures. That will get McManus. You know, it's a waste of time. We can't really afford that apparatus. A waste of your time, too. If you could get just one word from him. The jaws off its hinges, man. He couldn't form a word, even if he was censored. He could write one. See that? That's his pulse. Now look at that. Oh, you'll be watching a miracle. That's the EEG, his brain. It shouldn't be working at all after the way it's been smashed. Crazy. The brain's a power to itself. But I'm warning you, Brunel, when that brain stops screaming, I'll need that bed badly. Stay by him, and keep your pad and pencil ready. Yes, sir. It's all right, Inspector. The Assistant Commissioner just wants a word with you. Sorry, Brunel. Your office said you were on the way to his publishers. I just wanted a word. Always your privilege. Mola. Yes, sir. Are you wanting anything else? Yes, sir. There was a knife in Clapham Common. Drop it. You want to know who did it, Brunel? So do I. Of course. I'm glad it fell to you. You wouldn't dream of taking off it. Why don't you go and chat in Piccadilly Circus to stop a bit more traffic now? Is there something I ought to know? No. Oh. Just keep me informed. He was a brilliant writer. And his last few books were the best. What were they about? Um, evil and power. He had a gift for tying one to the other, but nobody wanted to know. I mean, copies always sold. Somehow they never got reviewed. Could he have made enemies with uh, what he wrote? Well, better read him and see. Since no one paid very much attention, I doubt they inspired murder. Now, it's funny. 
There was something about him, something very private, very intense. A little menacing. If I'm honest, I'm not surprised somebody tried to kill him, but I couldn't tell you why. And uh, his personal life? I'd be surprised if he had one. He was so self-absorbed. At all the times we met, I can only remember one moment that didn't have to do with business. Well, I've read your whole manuscript now, John. Very exciting. I love your satirical dissection of the Prime Minister. But there is this other bit that rather worries me. Um, it's God who should God stand... himself who should stand at the bar of public opinion. That almighty enemy of evil should face the jury of his victims. The helpless, the hopelessly deformed, the despairing. Mm. It's, it's a little strong. Well, I'm not responsible for what my character said. Colby's despair entitles him to taunt that celestial non-entity. Yes, but your readers won't see it that way. They'll say it's you. I can live with that. I've known despair, too. Well, as you say, um, there was this, uh, another section I wondered about. Uh, how incredible. John? Uh, just, just a moment. I think we ought to... John? He sat there for over three hours. He was still there when I left at six. Did you mention him the next time you met? No. No, somehow you didn't intrude where Morla didn't want you to be. Mm. And the tramp? Do you remember him? Could you describe him? Um, not really, no. I'm, I'm slightly myopic. Thanks for your help. Well, I'm sorry, it's... Just the only personal anecdote I have. <laughs> For the state he's in, he must have a bloody good reason to stay alive. I cannot live alone with this knowledge. What's more, I cannot die with it. That's the terrible beauty of a cleft stick. Either end can beat you to death. God and gentle Jesus are now the in thing. Mild, pious nothings, and then grab the biggest fee you can. No sign of hell. The walls of Jericho fell to the power of thought. So what is the meaning of impossibility? Sonfeld. If only she knew. You'll go blind, Inspector. We've been sifting through the tenant list. It's a blank draw so far. Only one woman ever spoke to him. Tried to get him to join the Tenants Association. Apparently, he said, don't bother me again with your middle-class crap and close the door. I am learning to admire the man more and more. Well, even his collection of pictures. Look at Medusa over there. Well, she's not very pretty, is she? 
She was a monster created to do battle with the gods. She is supposed to turn you to stone, not look pretty. Sham, I want to show you something. What's the word from the hospital? The same. Oh, I would like an extra crew to check the working tenants tonight. Anything suspicious, I want it all on paper. Will they give us the personnel for that? They will. Look at this. Floods, tornadoes, earthquakes, massacres, riots, killings, murders, air crashes, famine, nothing but disaster. And he has reams of them going back across the years. It's morbid. Maybe, but when you see them all collected like this, you realize how much disaster we live with. How far did he go? The atom risk at wind scale, the B-1 bomber crash, the American submarine, and last is the jumbo business here. Pity, if he lived a little bit longer, he could have pasted in the moonshot. Hmm. There's no end to disaster, Sergeant Duff. Whenever he died, there'd always be another. So what's the point? I don't know. I thought perhaps you would come up with something brilliant. His death will be a disaster. Perhaps he wanted to get into the scrapbook. Hmm. Not bad. Perhaps. Please get Rogers to send the rest of the journals to my place. With those and his novels, I have a lot of reading to do. Oh, how did it go with the psychiatrist? I'm seeing her again. Now, at least I'm getting an idea of what the man was like. Her? Yes, her. Not your type. I want to be all the help I can to you, Inspector, but I've been through all my notes on Mr. Mahler, and I can't find anything that would prompt someone to assault him the way you suggest. And tonight is, uh, tonight's very important to me. I will be brief. Um, do you know who L might be? In his journal, he has written no sign of L. Does that mean anything to you? No. No, he never referred to anyone that way. He seems fixated on disasters. Hmm? Yes. Could any of the other incidents Mola felt responsible for be called uh, disasters? Well, yes, one of them could be described that way. Were there any deaths involved? Yes, a few. A few. Was Mola blamed for any of them? Well, yes, he was under suspicion, yes. May I take my coat off, Dr. Zunfeld? Parsons? Since your first name is Walter, and your father is allegedly an expert in finance, perhaps you would care to contribute? Yes, sir. Uh, that is... The, the, the first crusade in... in, in I've class. given you a clue, Parsons. As the exquisite torture went on, I chose to watch the scarlet leaves being tossed by the grey gusts of the autumn wind. I took myself out of the arena. Was led by Walter the Penniless. And... Oh, do sit down, for God's sake. You're making me quite ill with your retching. Retention of facts, that is... Mauler? Mauler? Sir? Can we assume that you are with us in body, if not in spirit? Yes, sir. And what is that supposed to mean? That your assumption is correct, sir. I was watching the leaves. <laughs> Get to your feet. Are you deliberately trying to make a fool of me, Mauler? I'm sure one can only make a fool of himself, Mr. Copley. <laughs> Silence. That's very interesting. It appears we have a philosopher in our midst, watching the leaves. Well, I will assist you in your philosophic bet. After chapel, you will go into the grounds and you will pick up exactly 1,149 leaves. Which number, as you doubtless know, represents the terminating date of the Second Crusade? Yes, sir. Then you will bring those leaves to my study and we will count them. And if I find one leaf, more or less, I will thrash you, Mauler. I will thrash you so that you remember it for the rest of your misbegotten life.
Out my way, boy. Your leave, sir. 1,149. This won't do, Mona. These leaves are wet. I can't have them soiling my carpet. Go and dry them. Yes, sir. How dare you look at me like that? Get out. Get out. One master and four boys died in the fire. The master was the one who had made him... Uh... Yes. At the inquest, the whole story came out. Mauler admitted to leaving the furnace door open, and that was seen as the cause of the fire. No one believed it was deliberate. He was exonerated of all blame. Even by the parents of the boys who died? That I can't say. Oh. Well, you've given me my first lead, Doctor. I am grateful. Well, I'm glad I could be of some help. What did Mola feel about it? When I looked at Copley in the doorway, I knew he was going to die. What about the four boys? They're one of the reasons I'm here. Did you set fire to the building? I did not set fire to my school. I did not touch the brakes of my father's car. Therefore? Therefore, there must be something else. And was there something else? What else could there be? That's right. The south of Kent. Yes. Yes, I would like you to get the names of the boys who died. Yes, yes. And then I would like a biography of their families. Who is living? What they're doing? Where? I know, I know it's late, Sergeant, I know. May I suggest you start tomorrow morning, early? Hmm. Well, today, they blast off tomorrow. One of them said, I'm just an ordinary fellow doing a job, another finger-licking nausea. They worried about cracks in the west front. We shall see. Coming. Telekinesis. Yes. Oh, Sergeant Duff, come in. I think I found something. So have I. Hmm? Two of the neighbors say Pennington felt Mauler was responsible for his wife's death. How did she die? Apparently suicide. Mauler did have the habit of making himself responsible for such things. But that one, Pennington, would he have the nerve to kill? I don't know. Maybe if you loved your wife enough. Neighbors. People should mind their own business. They were trying to help, Mr. Penning. They weren't trying to help me. I hated him. I never tried to kill him. Of course not. But the more we learn about Morla, the easier it will be to find who did it. He deserved to get away with it. He would. Did you ever see Morla's eyes? A man can't be done in because of his eyes, Mr. Pennington. Maybe some should. 
The church says there are demons in some people. And there are. I tell you straight, my Grace would be alive today if it hadn't been for him. He killed her? He didn't take a gun to her. There are more ways than one of killing a cat. What exactly did he do, Mr. Pennington? It was because of the fish, you see. Hmm? Fish. Fish. Look at it, it's rotten. How can you pay money for something that's diseased and rotten like that? I looked it over carefully, Grace. It's not rotten, it's just the light in here. The light has nothing to do with it. It is bad, foul. Look at that colour, it's... Oh, it's disgusting! It's dead. All fish look like that when they're dead. Well, I'd like to know what that fish died of. It's probably full of mercury and lead and every poison in the sea. Died like any other fish. I'll make a little parsley sauce. If you want to poison me, don't try to disguise it. I'm not trying to poison you. It's a perfectly good fish. Mr. Miller, wait. Mr. Miller, he sees you coming, you fool. I won't eat it. I won't take a bite of it unless you eat it first. All right. Now, for heaven's sake, stop panicking. We'll eat something else. God, I've planned this meal all day. And then you bring home something like that full of infection. And the notion, I don't know how I can go on. Eat your food, darling. How can I when you have the television screaming all the time? You worry more about the neighbours than you do about me. I don't. Look, I'll wrap the bloody fish up and throw it away. Now, please, take a pill and calm down. Take a pill? Oh, God! I don't know why I go on. I just don't know why. I'll open a tin of ravioli. It'll be all right. God, I'd rather die. I'd rather get it over with before you kill me. Stop talking like that. You wouldn't care. None of you care. I'm a good man to jump. For God's sakes, woman, jump! <laughs> as a lawyer. Poor devil. I glance through the paper every day to see whether he's still with us. Medical wonder, they say. Well, he has a great will to survive. Well, there we are, life and death, damn funny things. What do I know about him? He was my junior for a time. Just another ordinary young hackbutt trying to make his way to a um, odd guinea. Never had a great deal to do with him. Little in common. Not even the law. His heart wasn't in it, and that's death in any profession. He married. Not wisely, but too well connected. That probably didn't help. Um, what kind of person was he? Very withdrawn sort of fellow. Had the most disconcerting eyes. One could never return his gaze in conversation. Somehow made one feel guilty. Do you know why he left the law? Thought that you knew. Thought that's why you come. No, I didn't know. Well. Yes, Mr. Mola. And may I suggest you be brief? Barrister's first windings up tend to be rather more generous with the court's time than is strictly necessary. <laughs> <clears throat> My lord, the chief villainy of Mr. Lovelace's pamphlet lies in his open admission that he would do what he could to make a world saner and more humane than the world we live in. His phrase, not mine. He made curbside speeches. He even wrote to certain politicians and so-called princes of the church. Could you bring us to the charges? My lord, the prosecution makes much of the defendant's professed wish to see the Imperial War Museum destroyed. Why, the defendant asks, do we send busloads of children to gawp at that collection of tributes to authorized murder? A crime? Well, look at this venerable courtroom. We're supposed to be civilized, aren't we? 
Yet we do shove innocence into that chamber of horror stuffed with pain and mutilation and death and say, look, June, this is what put the great in Britain. But where in that asylum of grotesques do we find framed the armament manufacturer's checkbook together with Grandpa's piss-pathetic medal and his artificial leg? I, for one, am with the defendant. If I knew how, I would blow the bloody place sky high. For which thought, if memory serves, the prosecution argues, if a man can be so scathing about our bloodied, militaristic past, what is he not capable of? I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he is not capable of a non-event. There was no bomb, no threats, no conspiracy. You know it, the prosecution knows it, I know it, the judge knows it. It is not the defendant who should be on trial here, but a besotted establishment who can cheerfully send a generation to slaughter in the name of war, and yet has the audacity to bring a hapless fool like Loveless to trial for uttering words. There was no crime, therefore there can be no sentence. My lord. Some good points, of course. But McKinley was the wrong man to give them to, especially in that way. He instructed the jury, got a verdict, Past sentence. It is plain to me that you deliberately sought to attack the law with a violence. And the only fit punishment is to remove you from society. I therefore sentence you to a period of imprisonment of nine years. Take him away. I guess what happened next? As Mola stared at him, the judge grew pale. Exactly. On the nail. And later, something happened to him. In his chambers an hour after the trial. Died of a heart attack. The coroner asked if there was anything to account for the look of terror on his face. What's in your mind, Inspector? It's what's on that mind that worries me. I've honestly never seen anything like it. If anything, it seems to be struggling harder. I have been reading his journals. He talks about uh, telekinetics. Fairy stories or anything to it? The power of thought to influence matter. Well, the Americans have done a lot of research in it. The Russians, too. They have a girl who can apparently think a chair across a room. In America, there's a man who can think pictures onto film through a lead plate. All I know is our ignorance is so great, I keep an open mind. Well, Inspector, we've traced these experiments on telekinetics and mental powers. The first one is fairly familiar. It demonstrates the power of the mind to dominate pain. It's in the tradition of lying on spikes and walking on hot coals. This second experiment is much more interesting. 
the boy's head is linked to a kind of scoreboard. By the power of his thoughts, he can turn on lights and ring bells. This film is one of the most famous of telekinetic demonstrations. Kulagina is just a Leningrad housewife and grandmother. Over 40 high-ranking scientists examined her for hidden magnets, wires, and other artificial aids. There were none. They could give no explanation of her powers to move objects. Lastly, and the most dramatic, this young history teacher is going to try to will this sheet of glass to shatter. Cenotaph, first choose a million victims. You know, Duff, I am beginning to wonder what we are chasing. Victim or murderer? It's a string of coincidences. Oh, I can see how it gave the bloke nightmares, but every single one is explainable. What do you think he wants? Conclusions. You tell me I have two months left in England? And I'm wasting too much time on a man who isn't even dead. Meanwhile, let's find Loveless. Morning, sir. Ah, bonjour. All are still alive? Yes, sir. Everything going all right? I think the expression is, uh, it belongs in a book. <laughs> yes, I read your reports. This, uh, Zonfeld, is he reliable? He's a her. And everything has checked so far. Some interested parties want his journals. Who? Oh, come. You have interested parties in France, too. Why? <laughs> they don't have to say why. He wrote books, Brunel. Is that against the law in England? Not yet. We've got enough trouble, Brunel, without a dozen Watergates to handle. Mola knew too much about those corridors of power, what goes on behind the wainscoting under the carpets. God knows how he learnt it, but he did. The books were bad enough. They want to know what's going on in those journals. Well, you've given me an interesting set of new suspects. No, no, no. That's not that way. They're too subtle for that, no. It was personal hatred that got Mola. Remember, I've been a detective too. That's why you know I want those journals. Taxi! I can tell you one thing, though. A lot of people will be relieved to know who did it. Not as many, apparently, as wished him dead. No, Mola didn't profess to use hypnosis. And you can't cause a school to burn or a motor car to move with hypnosis. He talks in his journal about the telekinetics. Ah, well, yes, a very disputed field. But in any case, hard to believe he could give measles to his nanny in quite that way. Or induce a heart attack on Judge McKinley. No. He told you about uh, McKinley? Well, yes. And his neighbor, Mrs. Pennington? Yes. You sound a little like you're becoming a victim of Mauler's own thinking. Well, it is a remarkable chain of uh, coincidence. Remarkable. It's not coincidence, it's me. It seems like you, but perhaps when we understand more about you, we'll know why. For God's sake, don't patronize me. Jesus, you spend most of your time dragging people out of hell, and yet you refuse to recognize the devil. Oh. If I believed in possession, Mr. Mauler, I'd be a witch doctor. Oh, you're clever. They told me you'd be clever. 
That's why I came. But don't talk to me of coincidence. Doctor, I... My wife and I had a baby. It was born deformed, withered. It lived for an hour, and when it died, the whole hospital breathed a sigh of relief. If you say coincidence to me, I will drive my fist through your face. All right, I'm not possessed. I don't believe in the devil any more than you do. Any more than I believe in God. But what is it? Do you know what I did when I saw that baby? I wanted that child. It was the only thing I had wanted from my marriage. But when I looked at it, all those coincidences seemed too much. I was afraid. I was afraid to tell anyone. So I went to the one place where people who are afraid can go. Ah, come in, Mr. Mola. It is uh, Mola, is it? Do come in. It is uh, a little dim in here, I'm afraid, but <laughs> most of my clients expect it. The truth is, Mr. Mola, we're nearer the dark ages than we care to admit. Now, sit down, please, by the table. Don't be nervous. I have a, a very varied clientele. <clears throat> Young girls who are pregnant, stockbrokers whose <laughs> businesses are failing, <laughs> middle-aged ladies in love with their hairdressers. <clears throat> we all need to know our destiny. Now, is it... Uh, just a simple reading you require, or, or... Just a simple reading. Something wrong. No. No, it's... A simple reading will be fine. Your hand, please. Your left hand. No. <laughs> There's been a recent tragedy. Yes. This... I... 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 I'm... I'm sorry, I... I'm not feeling... I'm not... I suggest that you... Go. And swear. Coincidence? Well, palmistry, Mr. Mauler. I'm surprised at you. All right, let's say you are possessed. Where do we go from here? The church? I'm sorry. Perhaps it would be better if we tried to understand why the child was all you wanted from your marriage. If you'd met my wife, that would be totally understandable. You realize this is the first time you've mentioned that you were married? We're separated. The one time in all my life when I almost felt pleasure at what I am. Don't I look ravishing? Ravishing? What's the occasion? A traffic accident? I'm going to the theatre with Edward. Edward Parrish. I'm sure you recognize the face. Yes, 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 vaguely. Isn't he the uh, peculiar fellow who played Jesus with a wig on once? <laughs> oh, no, no, he couldn't be. Adultery wouldn't be his game, would it? Mind. Go right ahead. I think you may need a drink. Do? He isn't going to perform for us, is he? 
<laughs> no. But I see you are. We perform us all, aren't we? Me, the dutiful husband, you, the loving wife. I can see what Patricia means. You really don't deserve her. Nobody deserves Patricia. She was invented by God to test our belief in him. She is a girl of extraordinary sensitivity and talent. Patricia was never a girl, little Jesus. Childhood has to do with innocence and roses. Her gift is for prussic acid and uh, flying on broomsticks. How did she ever come to choose you? Divination. I suppose Daddy's going to finance your next excapade on films, is he? I want to marry her. Oh, he's offered that much, has he? You bastard. It was you who wanted to get married. I mistook you for a woman. You really are as foul as she says. I have a gift for speaking the truth. It leaves a guilty stench in her nostril, something you have in common, I imagine. You've gone too far. Dear boy. Oh, I doubt it. Well, there's only really one issue. Are you prepared to let her go? Let her go? My dear fellow, if I weren't a faintly interested party, I'd appear for you myself. The happiest day of our marriage. Yes. Yes, it is. Daddy was right. You aren't capable of producing anything but a vegetable. Patricia? Goodbye, my dear husband. And don't expect me back. I won't. You know the rest. An hour later, an artificially sympathetic policeman told me that my wife and an unidentified male companion had been killed in a car crash on the Bayswater Road. Well, I can understand how after your baby's death, both of you... I made thought... it happen. It wasn't like the others where I knew it would happen. I made it happen. Well, perhaps you wanted it to happen more than the others. But you couldn't cause an accident miles away. You wanted it. You wanted it badly. That's what we must concentrate on. I made that accident happen. So you see, Inspector, your thinking has come around to his. Well, you've given me another suspect to chase. My father. But I confess, if I were Mola, I would be coming to see you, too. Uh, were you able to help him at all? Oh, that was the last time I saw Mr. Mola. He never returned to my office. That's all? I'm sorry we won't have to meet again, but... Th that is all I have to tell you about Mr. Mauler. Thank you, Doctor. When all is said and done, Zonfeld is no more than a witch doctor who conditions doubters to accept the dung heap. Doctor, the planes are keeping me awake at night, screaming over my head, hour after hour, delusions, my dear friend. Doctor, my skin is black and I keep thinking I'm different, delusions, my dear fellow. Doctor, when I get behind a wheel, I have an insane urge to kill. Delusions, my dear friend, delusions, delusions, delusions. Like a ride, Inspector. English humor, huh? You're wanted at the hospital. I don't know why. 
no more deaths in the jumbo crash, so everything's back to normal. The long hairs are planning a uh, protest march on the atomic energy plant at Windscale. The dear old British power is calling it. Stop the car! Inspector Brunel, w wait, please, you can't. Inspector. I'm sorry, but you're coming to the hospital with me. But I have a patient due in. The patient will wait. I want you to come to the hospital now. I'm not sure why I called. So perhaps I just needed someone to share my astonishment. Somewhere deep within what's left of that brain, something is going on. It's grown stronger almost every hour. Is he recovering? We've kept the respirator going. We've tried to stimulate the heart. But we one for that. Nothing. But how can that be? The brain is complicated. Ask her. It begins in blood and flesh and ends in incomprehensible tangles of fear, dreams, love, will. That's the ordinary brain, never mind that one. All I can tell you is, you're looking at a mind determined not to die. But why? Is there something he's trying to tell us? Maybe. Maybe he forgot to turn off the gas. Doctor. Well, that's all right, that's all right. It's something I ought to have seen. Oh, well, goodbye again, Inspector. Goodbye. Settlement was reached about allowances and overtime pay. The prisoner's normal exercise periods and other privileges which were stopped during the work to rule will be restored tomorrow morning. A mass meeting of the environmental group Friends of the Earth has unanimously approved a plan to hold a protest march from London to the nuclear power station at Windscale in Cumbria, as part of their latest campaign directed at the dangers of nuclear pollution in Britain. A spokesman for the campaign said the atomic plant and associated waste materials at Windscale constituted a threat to generations of Englishmen. Okay, it's simmering. Expect over 5,000 people to take part in the march to Windscale. I said it's simmering. Are the onions brown? Yes. In Switzerland, well, what now? The Put the onions and the bacon in. Right. Onions and bacon going in. Then pour in the wine and have it uh, weir. Have it what? Bubble for two minutes. Here at home, the Dean of Minster Cathedral has announced that the Queen, members of the Cabinet, and representatives of the Commonwealth will be among the guests at a Thanksgiving service being held to commemorate the completion of the fund set up to restore the West Front. You know, it's amazing how many of those who might have had a grudge against him are dead. The family of those kids where you wouldn't believe it. And that loveless poor old bugger got out of the nick, spent six months on the dole, became a tramp, and was finally knocked flat by a bus. Well, I want you to check on the father-in-law. I discovered his property here and abroad. She was the only daughter, and 
Yes? Yes, yes, it is. Of course. No, no, please do. Flat B, 27 Latimer Gardens. Yes. Her. I knew she couldn't just drop him like that. Oh, shit! After all that work! in the kitchen. Hello. Hello. Um, I I'm sorry to disturb you. Not at all. I was glad to get your call. I'm here for such a short time. You oh, know. you I'm... made it warm. It's uh, what I expected. Uh, could I offer you a drink? Oh, yes. Uh, whiskey, please. Please, sit down. Thank you. I lied to you when I told you I'd never seen him again. I never saw him in the office again. But I did see him. I lied because I knew so much more. And, and what I knew seemed so... You said it was urgent, and I've had to leave a situation I'd rather not have left. I'm sorry, but it was urgent to me. Well, I'm surprised you found something so important worth the attention of a witch doctor. When you're not being obvious, I have hopes for you. You don't believe I could cause my wife's death, do you? Oh, Mr. Morley, oh, please, please I don't listen to me. I know now that it wasn't just my wife. It was all of them. I made them happen. Copley, the children, all of them. Mr. I made Morley. them happen. Mr. Molly, you... I did it. I made that school burn. You couldn't. It's true. I made that school burn. I killed my mother. I killed my father. Even, even my nurse. I made it happen. I made it happen. You don't believe me. I believe it might be useful if I gave you something to help you sleep tonight. And we'll meet in my office tomorrow. I don't want them pills. I don't want to be condescended to like some moron. I tell you, I tell you, Zonfil, I made it happen. I commanded it to happen. You still don't believe me? Please. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Tomorrow? For God's sake, Sonfeld, I killed my father, I killed my mother, I killed my wife. It's not just a damned headache. What am I? How can I will death? I'm going. I'll hold a space open for you at 11 o'clock. No, you stay here. Tomorrow at 11? No. Not tomorrow. You've got full power, Captain. Stop responding! Give me flat 10! Flat 10! We're not moving! It's 
understand is why is it always destructive sometimes when I'm alone at night I've thought I've created all the world's disasters but it's not true we're all the devil's children we find what powers the Sun and we make bombs of it we create wealth and we become obsessed with greed we achieve power and we go mad. We always destroy. Why, Zonfeld, why? Reports are just coming in that a jumbo jet has crashed in central London. Over 300 people are believed to have been on board the plane. Unconfirmed reports say that the plane plunged into an office block and exploded. Falling debris has set fire to a cinema and many people in the streets below have been killed and traffic in the West End has been brought to a standstill. It's not yet known what caused the crash. That's the end of this news flash. Help me, Zonfeld. Before I go mad. I could help no one that night. When I left those rooms, I believed. I believed what I'd seen. When I, when I got home, I wasn't so certain. It, it seemed so beyond belief. And now, you believe again? Yes. And when I saw what I saw today in that hospital, I felt I had to tell you. I won't let disturb you anymore. Thank you, Doctor. I'm, uh... I'm grateful you came. Well, what do you make of that? Well, our victim was obviously a nut. And now it turns out his psychiatrist is one too. What are you really thinking? She just hasn't finished yet. No. Well, you think she did it? Oh, no, no, Inspector. That's a bit too much of a jump. Why kill him? I think it must have been because she believed he was going to do something worse. Worse than the jumbo jet disaster? I don't know, but certainly something worse than she would be doing by killing him. Well, you say it's uh, not important. What is important is whether or not you are right. And if you are right, in getting a confession that will stand up in court.
Excuse me. What, what is this for? We're getting ready for the Thanksgiving service. Tomorrow evening, the Queen, the Commonwealth Prime Ministers. It's for that. Three million pounds. It's not enough. Huh? The West France cracking. See? It goes right through to the name. If that goes, the whole lot goes. Tower's too heavy. The foundations can't support it anymore. Thank you. They're worried about cracks in the West Front. We shall see. I am the man with the power to create catastrophe. Terry, I said I didn't want to be... Inspector. I convinced her you would see me. Of course. I thought uh, perhaps we should talk. You've decided, have you? Yes. It's been such a problem for me. I can't live with this knowledge or die with it. I assume there were reasons. Oh, yes, yes, there were reasons. He came to see me at my home the day after the jumbo crash. For all the chaos, traffic. Somehow for me, the reality of, of ruined buildings, ambulance men, broken bodies, made what I'd seen in his flat seem all the more impossible. He sensed that immediately and he left before we'd exchanged two sentences. The next night he called. Sounded unstable. He said, the space shot is nearing the moon, Zonfeld. In two hours, it goes into orbit. You have my word, it won't return. While you're worrying about that billion-dollar coffin striking the moon, spare a thought for the millions that they might have fed with all that technology and expertise. How concerned all our great statesmen are about those three wonderful human beings while millions of others can rot to death. Now listen, Zonville. Listen to me. I found a way to do God's dirty work for him. The royal chieftain, her parasites, and the whole gang of international rabble-rousers are going to bleat to the almighty nothing in his great temple to give praise for three million pounds. I promise you, the moment they kneel to pray, I will bring the whole edifice down on their unworthy heads. He sounded quite mad, and yet I believed every word he said. I had to go to him. The streets were deserted. Even the police were more concerned with that traffic accident in space. No one saw me. No one cared. The porter didn't even look up from his television set. I didn't know what I was going to do. It's unlocked. Come in. Never. Thought you'd come. Just a moment, I, I don't want to miss this. You're very weak. We're down to 10 miles, Jeff. I'm trying to link the auxiliary circuit to the computer. Pulled your drink. I thought we ought to be civilized about it. He sat watching the last moments of catastrophe. Well, those were the last words. 
They've lost radio contact. Achilles 6, the mission that was to inaugurate man's first permanent station on the moon, is locked into an orbit that, unless some miracle occurs, will produce the first American disaster in space. Even then, I thought I might somehow stop it. For a moment, it turned me to stone. Ah. A response at last. I knew as long as he lived, there was no way of stopping it. And I failed. I couldn't tell anyone. No one would believe me. They'd say the madness was mine. And perhaps it was. Then we are mad together. I have seen the cathedral, and I think I know what's keeping him alive. Well, there's nothing you can do. No one will believe you. I'm going to try. I wish you luck. You're not arresting me? It's a question of uh, priorities. Found the murderer, Brunel, but two crackpots don't add up to one good theory. I still don't believe you. To begin with, Moller isn't dead. He is fighting to live with superhuman resistance, right? Against all reason. All right. Against the reason he believed he had the power to destroy a plane, to shatter a cathedral. He is alive. So is the belief. He said he would do it. I believe he will. How? I told you about those experiments. Russia, Denmark, the United States. I have seen a man shatter glass just by concentrating his thoughts. Brunel. A hundred years ago, the idea of sending the human voice across oceans was madness. But Minster Cathedral. But Zonfeld believed he could do it. Zonfeld believed enough to kill him. But why Minster? Why a cathedral? Because it's, it's the church, the establishment. It's everything he hates. All right, all right. And what would you suggest we do? Cancel the ceremony. Close the cathedral. Are you mad? Do you know the kind of preparation the Christ Brunel? And what reason am I going to give them? Your story. They'd lock me up. Go to the dean. He shouldn't question the power of unseen forces. It's quite out of the question. I have the surveyor's word for the soundness of the cathedral, and Her Majesty can't be forced to change long-laid plans simply because a madman makes threats. Sir, with respect, we believe this threat is real. We call it reasonable suspicion. You might call it faith. Well, moral philosophy. Something one doesn't expect from the Yard, Commissioner. Science can't explain why Moller's mind is still alive, Your Eminence. And I don't think it can explain what his mind is capable of either. But you'd agree that there is much that science cannot explain. I've done you an injustice, Inspector. I must grant an open mind on Mr. Mauler, and I will pray for his soul. Couldn't we go above the dean? I could go to the Home Secretary, tell him there's this maniac, three parts dead. Sending out brain waves powerful enough to shatter cathedrals from two miles away. <laughs> He's in Scotland, coming down by train tomorrow. Well, I'll try to catch him at Leeds, talk to him on the way down. All right.
already you're becoming used to my failures. And we've only known each other such a short time. I went back to the hospital. I stood and stared at him. It seemed so easy. Cut one tube, pull one plug. A dozen ways to end it. But I couldn't. Couldn't finish what I had begun. So I leave our problem with you, my dear inspector. Forgive me. the lorries. Terrible vibrations. They should ban them from this area, really. Hi, sir. Rod at nuclear plant. Any luck? We had meetings the whole trip. Wouldn't see me. The secretary said he'd make an appointment tomorrow morning. Well, I couldn't very well just barge in with the story we have. What news from the hospital? I don't understand. His EEG went crazy during the evening. Then it settled. Now it's increasing again. I don't know what it means. Zomfeld's dead. Suicide. I don't know. There are times when I know you're right and others when I know it just can't be. Frankly, I don't know what to do. Watch, wait, hope we are insane. I have no time for this, Inspector. I know, but rubble is falling from the church. That's what the fund is all about. It's the evening traffic. The traffic has been diverted. There is no possible... I understand your concern, but I promise you, you have nothing to fear. Now pray for the church, Inspector. Pray for your own peace of mind.
convinced. Enough to want to stop it? Yes. There is one thing we can do. I'll buy it at any price. Throw a bomb scare. We could empty that church in minutes. We'll do it. You warn them in there, I'll clear the whole area. He'll never believe me. You go. I'll get the area clear. Ah, Bruno. No panic. Quarter to seven. Very time. Very good. Inspector Brunel, French exchange. Yes? Sir. We've had a bomb threat. The cathedral has to be cleared immediately. It's just a hoax. We've been through that church three times. The clergy have, too. Not a prayer book that hasn't been checked. Sir, we have every reason to believe it's not a hoax. You can't take the chance. Doug will check the main aisle and the section held for Queen and the minister. Yes, sir. But, sir... I'll handle this, Inspector. Now, what's the source of this call? I'll get the assistant commissioner. Sir, have you seen the AC? They wouldn't believe me. They think it's a hoax. Talk to them. I got the deacon. He gave them the news. He'll be out shortly. That should convince them. It'll take time to clear this crowd. Come on, come on, come on. Get them out of there. He didn't believe you. They're not cancelling it. Sir, look. I will bring the whole edifice down on their unworthy heads. Get them out of there. I'm going to the hospital. The Queen! The Queen! The queen!
Sir, sir, look. Depend, depend. The nuclear bond. Brunel. Thank you. 